many of you have ever returned an item to a store such as Target or Walmart? What requirements do we have to meet in order to get our money back or get some kind of merchandise credit? Well, a receipt certainly helps. That proves that someone purchased that item from that particular store and paid good money for it. If our return falls within the required time period, usually 30 to 60 days, then we typically get our money back right then and there. If we don't have a receipt, many stores will acknowledge our purchase as valid if they recognize the brand name of the item and even the number of the item. Those stores usually offer a merchandise credit, acknowledging that we probably purchased the item from them even though we cannot prove when we purchased it. Some stores also have the ability to search their point of purchase system to verify that someone purchased that item at that store within the time period we claimed. And in those cases, an actual refund may be given on that basis alone. However, if a consumer presents an item of a different brand, a brand the store never carried, particularly if it is the brand of a competing store, then that customer service agent will settle the matter very quickly and easily by telling us, sorry, you didn't buy that from us. We have no sign of that item anywhere in our store. It was purchased from one of our competitors. See that label? Of course, this scenario could happen innocently to anyone, but as soon as a customer customer service points out to us that our merchandise came from another store, we'd probably chuckle, apologize for our oversight, and thank her for her time, right? However, if we were to dig our heels in and decide to argue with that customer service clerk and insist that they were wrong in spite of the proof found right in our merchandise itself, surely that would be completely irrational on our part, right? The burden of proof would be ours because the evidence is clear and we don't have a leg to stand on. So it is with medical doctors. Hi, I'm Dolly Weber. Today, we as Christians have been fed a lie that was instigated hundreds of years ago. Not all Christians have bought into that lie, but today, in 2019, the majority of Christians still believe, without ever even examining the issue, that God gave us doctors and wants us to use them. Just like the consumer who was fully convinced that his Walmart merchandise came from Target, most Christians today are fully convinced that medical doctors come from God. In both instances, false assumptions have led to wrong thinking. Today, a growing number of diligent Berean Christians are getting up the courage to ask the Lord, did medical doctors really come from you and do you want us going to them? Upon closer examination of the facts, both concerning scriptural truths and modern medicine itself, many of those Christians have discovered that they have been misled on this issue. Just as that Walmart merchandise was never purchased from a Target, so the Lord never gave us or wanted his children going to medical doctors. I present in my book and my YouTube series, Strangers in the Oil, overwhelming evidence which proves to the truth-seeking Christian that the God of the Bible could have nothing whatsoever in common with modern medicine, nor does he approve of his children seeking help from their methods. A true child of God knows certain things about the Lord, about his ways, about his commands, about his heart and his gifts. We learn what he hates, what he loves, how he provides, how he tells us to fight our battles, and how he teaches us to receive from him. Based on who God is, and based on all that the Father and the Son have ever stated concerning disease and healing, we know that the field of medicine bears the earmarks of an entirely different approach, which honors an entirely different set of gods. Upon closer examination, one who knows Jesus easily recognizes earmarks of Satan. The Lord says we fight in the spirit. Satan wants us to fight in the flesh. The Lord provides healing directly from himself by our faith in the blood of Jesus. But Satan does all he can to provide another way. The Lord warns us that pharmacia leads to hell, but Satan recommends it for our health. Remember, white witches purport to even heal at times. The end does not justify the means, and for any seeming good Satan performs, he always attaches a spiritual payback. Like that merchandise sold by Walmart, which carried no guarantee from Target, so medical doctors come from a different supplier and receive no approval from the Lord. Are you willing to test this matter, as we are all commanded in Scripture to do? 
Would you accept the customer service agent's assessment of your merchandise telling you it was purchased from another store? Or would you stand there and argue? You'd never win that argument because all the evidence stands against you. So it is with medical doctors. Those who insist that they come from God have not one piece of scriptural evidence to stand on. First, we have no receipt. Scripture provides no sign whatsoever that the Lord ever instructed or even endorsed his children appealing for help from medical doctors. On the contrary, one man strong in faith named Asa lost his battle with disease specifically because he sought the help of medical doctors. Jesus helped a woman with the issue of blood only after she had finished appealing to medical doctors. Secondly, God does not associate in any way with their methods. The new covenant provision for our healing comes purely from the blood of Jesus, just like forgiveness of sins. Just as for our sins, we must appropriate the blood of Jesus in its pure, unmixed, unadulterated form if we expect to see results. James states with amazing categorical promise that if a believer is sick, then he or she must call for those who are seasoned in their faith and have those strong believers anoint that sick one with oil and then wait in faith faith and that individual will be healed. James did not say might be healed. He said he will be healed. Just as he went on to say that any sins that individual committed would be forgiven as well. Medical doctors don't even mention this fact. Leave alone follow it. Any true servant or representative of the Lord for healing would have to obediently follow what the Lord says for healing. Would he not? Our God is not wishy-washy. Thirdly, there's not even one sign of God using or approving of them anywhere in the system. Well, in scripture itself. All scriptural teaching regarding disease and healing always centers around faith. It is a gift from God, promised by God, that we receive from God by faith. Medical doctors sign a pledge promising that they will ignore all of this and all scriptural commands for healing. They will fight it through carnal means instead. They address sickness in a manner entirely opposite of everything we read in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. In fact, Hippocrates, who was called the father of modern medicine, blatantly stated that what the Lord taught about healing was nothing but religious superstition. Fourth, they bear the logo of an enemy god. Medical doctors identify themselves with pagan gods and wicked demonic symbols. Those symbols and the gods they represent are very real and very active. There is no way that a thrice holy god could ever overlook, endorse, or even associate with a group which so blatantly celebrates symbols illustrating copulating snakes, a male penis, a messenger god from the mountain of the gods, Mount Hermon, a magic potion, and even sex change itself. The Lord is not blind, nor is he stupid and I go into these symbols more fully in Strangers in the Oil. These four elements alone prove that medical doctors come from another store, another source, another God. It is not the God of the Bible. So guess who that little G God would be? What would you do if you were that consumer trying to return a Walmart item at a Target store? Would you face the facts with a smile? Or would you bury your head in the sand and argue with the clerk until the security had to remove you from the store? In 2 Timothy 4.2, Paul warned Timothy with the following words, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Is it easier for you to believe that medical doctors truly represent the Lord than to believe that we must simply follow scriptural instructions alone? Are you afraid to trust the Lord? Do you have family members who work in the medical field, perhaps, or support you in any other way? John warned us in 1 John 5 21, Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. In 1 Timothy 4 1, Paul warns further, the Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. 
Were you aware that a fallen angel named Asclepius was named in the original Hippocratic Oath? Were you aware that fallen angels such as him were very real and were written about in the Book of Enoch and cited for their demonic education of mankind, just as is stated in the Hippocratic Oath, including the realms of surgery and sorceries? Perhaps you didn't know that Luke the physician was referred to as an Asclepian priest and his job as doctor involved literal interaction with that fallen angel named Asclepius. Paul also warned Timothy about what is falsely called knowledge. In 1 Timothy 6.20, he says, O Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you. Avoid irreverent, empty chatter and the opposing arguments of so-called knowledge. Well, Proverbs 1.7 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of true knowledge. And we need look no further than the realm of modern medicine to find opposing arguments to true knowledge. The Lord says we walk by faith, not by sight. Modern medicine says we walk by sight and not by faith. The Lord says that our battles are spiritual ones. Modern medicine says the battles reside in flesh and blood, and that is how we fight. Arguments opposing what God taught us? Doctrines taught by demons? Well, step right up and you'll find them all right here completely permeating the realm of modern medicine. Perhaps you think you're too old of a Christian to have missed something this big? Well, Jesus did warn us that false messiahs and false prophets would appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive even the elect. Medical wonders, medical miracles, and doctors do behave like gods, and people tend to treat them like gods. False prophets, false messiahs. What makes you think the Lord is not showing you something right now? Yes, all evidence in scripture absolutely proves that medical doctors were never part of God's plan to heal us. All evidence in scripture puts them in the category of an idol. If you know anything about idols, you know that God hates idols and he cannot even hear our prayers, leave alone answer them when idols are involved. The prophets always urged the people to put them away because only then would they see the glory of God return. God has not changed today. I challenge you to prove otherwise. The burden of proof really does rest in your lap, just like that customer trying to return Walmart merchandise to Target. So how will you respond? I urge you to examine this matter and do so quickly. I look forward to talking with you next time. The Lord bless you.